Hi guys, it's Rana the Math Person. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to be bombarded with all these new videos, make sure you turn off that notification. Other than that, let's just dive right into this question. In this video, I'll be going over question 86 on SO exam P. So we'll pause the video real quick and try this problem yourself. Okay, as we are tempted, let's just dive right in. So they tell you that you can only get um, pension if you stay with the company until retirement. And so there's 0.4% that stays with the company un until retirement, but 06 drop out. So if you drop out, you just basically get $0. So we don't really care about the people who drop out. But so we took care of one. Probably that she's not married at the time of retirement is 0.25. So not married is 0.25, which means married must be 0.75. And they, tell, they also tell you that these are all independent events. Cool. Okay, so then if you're not married, you you can only get one, right? Because it's just the insurance pension for yourself. But if you're married, you actually can get two, which is really nice of them. And then the probability that you're going to be not married is 0.25 times 0.4, which is 0.1. And the probability that you're married and you are stay with the retirement, you stay until retirement is 0.75 times 0.4, which is 0.3. So if they ask, calculate the probability the city will provide at most 90 pension to the 100 new hires and their husbands. Okay, okay. So then 100 is definitely bigger than 20, so we can use the central limit theorem. So then the expected value of x, where x is the number of pensions, is equal to 1, right? The prob 1 times the probability that you're not married and you stay until retirement, plus 2 times the probability that you're gonna get married and you stay with the company or you stay with the police. So this is equal to 0.1 times 1 plus 2 times 0.3, which is equal to 0.7. And if they require, if they give it to 100 new people, the expected x star I'm gonna say is the 100 is equal to 100 times 0.7, which is equal to 70. And we actually need to find the variance, right? So then we know we also have to find the second moment. The second moment is equal to 1 squared times 0.1 plus 2 squared times 0.3. So this is equal to 1.3. So then the variance formula as normal is equal to the second moment minus the first moment squared. So then this is equal to 1.3 minus 0.7 squared, which is equal to 0.81. But if we're looking for variance of x star for 100 people, this is equal to 0.81 times 100. So this is equal to. So then the standard deviation of x star is equal to the square root of 0.81 times 100, which is equal to 9. All right, cool. And then so moving on, we can finally figure out what we're looking for. We're looking for calculate the probability the city will up provide at most 90 pensions. So probably the x star is less than 90 to the 100 new hires and husbands. Okay, the only problem with this is that you can't, number of people, number of pension is not continuous. It's discrete. You can only give give it to one person or you don't. But when we use normal third um, central limit theorem, we assume that this is continuous. So we gotta actually kind of like put like a little bandage on there so we can use the normal approximation on the discrete variable. So this is called a continuity correction. I made a whole, so I actually made a whole video about continuity correction, but basically if you say you're looking for less than 90 in a continuous case, this is what you get. But because we're talking about a um, discrete case, this part actually is the part this is less than 90, right? So when you say less than 90 for a discrete case, you're actually including this part as well. So as you may notice, this little chunk right here is not being accounted for. So someone was like, okay, okay, so then might as well just shift the 90 this way over and add 0.5. So start this thing at 90.5. So then it'll start like here and it'll better be able to approximate this value. So then using that, continue the correction, this becomes x is less than 90.5. And then normalizing this sucker out, you get x minus mean over standard deviation is less than 90.5 minus mean, where mean is equal to 70, divided by standard deviation 9. 
this right here is the definition of z. So this is equal to z is less than 90.5 minus 70 divided by 9, which is equal to z is less than 2.2778. All right, let's pull up our z table. So z is less than 2.28, 2.28 is equal to like approximately 0.9887 which is approximately equal to 0.99, our answer E. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye.